Hey, all of it, all of it. Thank you so much for listening to the Men's Room Podcast. And thanks to our pals at the Advocates Law Firm for being great partners. Yes, even you, creepy, creepy, creepy Kyle. Seriously, though, if you'd been injured as a result of somebody else in your car, on your bike, walking across the street, talk to our friends at the Advocates Law Firm and let them help you out. Yeah, they're the best injury lawyers around, and they want to make sure that you're not taken advantage of. Plus, your first consultation is free. It's simple. You get injured, the advocates get results. Contact them today at advocateslaw.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. What's up? It's your boy, V. Ted Smith. Thanks for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Want more? Check out the greatest podcast in all the land. The podcast. Be sure to subscribe and listen to a brand new episode every Tuesday night. Back to the conversation. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Right a question, question 206 421 Rock. Turns out, uh, Steve, that those uh, vats there in Isquot, Dairy Gold, uh, aren't filled with uh, delicious chocolate milk after all. Yeah, I know it was very disappointing for you. They said it's cottage cheese. Ah, the worst. Uh, the worst. Sour right. cream and the something worst. else. I like cottage cheese. No. But would you would you put your mouth under a nozzle where when ah. you flip the lever, it's just cottage ah. cheese dumping in your mouth? Ah. I mean, that sounds Why awful. are you even thinking about it? The answer is no. Just say. Can I bring my hot sauce? <laughs> would you dive into the pool of cottage cheese? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That. That would feel That would good. feel really nice. It would, man. I guess I'll have to eat my way out. <laughs> what would you do if you checked into a hotel room and I was in the bed just slathered in college cheese? I mean, that would be alarming. Pepper spray. <laughs> right? <laughs> Same thing anybody would do. <laughs> Honey, Jesus. Just scream so and beat you with so something. disgusting. I can't stand that stuff. I don't know how people eat it. Mike, it's, you don't eat it. Am I the only fine. one that eats it? It just looks... Ah, it's nasty, it's man. It's terrible. It the tastes consistency. like mozzarella. Yes. The consistency is not awesome. It's like someone ate mozzarella cheese, then spit it in a cup for you to eat it. No, like I, can, I, can eat, I can eat ricotta. I can eat other things. That's in, different in though. that family, but I mean that stuff is just. Terrible. It looks like milk that's been in the fridge for just a little bit too long, so it's got a little yeah. bit chunky. And then everybody's telling you, "No, just put some hot right. sauce in it. It's fine." It's like blue it looks cheese. Like Sheila it's three like, years after the wedding photo. You mean it's like blue cheese? You don't know when it's bad or not. Yes. You know what I mean? it's like, I no. Know. The thing about blue cheese, when it molds, it becomes like an entirely different color of mold that I only see on blue cheese. <laughs> that's what I mean. Right. So the mold and blue cheese that you can eat looks like mold you shouldn't eat. But then when blue cheese molds, you look at that mold. And it's like, oh, this you, is perfectly fine. Then you get sick. Random, random, Which, random, I don't like blue random, cheese, random, random, but for some reason, random, cottage cheese I love. Random, random, I mean, to be random, fair, random, one is moldy. Random, so, random, yeah, random, you've kind of erred on the side random, of caution, I believe. Correct. It comes with a little seal and everything. Mm-hmm. Yours looks chewed up, but no one actually chewed it. <laughs> Hello, Corey. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, Pistola. Hola. Hola. Hey, Corey, Corey, you I like, gotta agree with you, Miles, man. I can't stand cottage cheese. Yeah, what do you gotta put crap in? It's like, like Steve will say about vegetables. You gotta wrap bacon around it to make it taste better. It's not that good. Cottage cheese <laughs> yeah. is the same thing. You gotta put stuff in it, and then people eat it. You root well. To get people to eat it, yes, because again, it does look vile. But I'm telling you, and, and I never wanted to try cottage cheese, but when the kids are young, they got it, so you try a spoonful. I'm like, not so bad. Okay, have you ever seen cottage cheese on the menu anywhere? Yes, but to be fair, I was in Florida, and everyone else in this particular delicatessen was very, very old. Okay, let me ask you But this. that's the one time. When is the, because I'm not sure, like you say cereal, I say, okay, breakfast, late night snack, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. All right. When is the appropriate time that one eats cottage cheese? I feel like oftentimes it's eaten at lunch. It's a lunch thing. But I eat it at night. Okay. So I'm a wild man. All right. Again, in my limited experience, it is a small side dish for the other things children eat, so I equate it with dinner. All right, I, I just I, I've never seen it like someone go. Oh, and would you like some cottage cheese? And I would say, <laughs> hell no. Well, you know I mean? right. It's got to be either a restaurant that serves like old people, elderly, or children. Is right. it like the equivalent of applesauce? Yes, yes. Is that what cottage cheese? It's like cheese dairy's is? applesauce. So he could be there if it wants. It to could be, be, but again, you understand the clientele. You will not find it at a bar. But you'll find it maybe at Denny's. I will take a bowl of cottage cheese. Yeah, like, I mean, it's always by, like, the salad bar, too. You can throw some cottage cheese in there. Sure, sure. But nobody's, like, no restaurant is going to say, you know what? Come in here for our (laughs) world-famous cottage cheese. Exactly. (laughs) World-famous. Internationally renowned cottage cheese. (laughs) All right, let's see here. What's our random question question? Okay, let's go with this one. Uh, When did you know it was time to end the relationship? When did you know it was time to end the relationship? 
Mm. Oh, well, I guess it ain't a relationship that I was thinking about initially right out the get. I was uh, on a, I don't know, must have been a third or fourth date with the girl. And she didn't like the way I was talking to a waitress. How were you talking she, to the waitress? Well, I was just being polite and saying hello. It was a late night dinner, uh, like I said, at our fourth date. And then she goes a little bit psycho on me, whips out the fork and sticks it under my chin and asks me, what the hell are you talking to her for? Oh. Like, Whoa, I'm just trying to be nice here, you know. I'm, I'm not doing anything. Are you, a, well. uh, are you a very attractive man? Uh, somewhat attractive, I think so, yeah. Okay, was this a very attractive woman? Yes, she was. Okay. But not so attractive right. that it outweighed the fork Look, at your throat. I, I'm sure. I'm sure. No. I'm sure. If you're a good-looking waitress or waiter, you have uh, you, you've seen this movie many, many a million times. times, of course, right? I mean, even if you're it, being nice, people mistake that for you're flirting with them as opposed to I just want a bigger tip, and then on it goes. Yeah, right? that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. She was paying more attention to you, or or vice versa, or whatever the deal is. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you're looking at him because he's a good looking guy. Blah, 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 right? Yeah. <laughs> the restaurant didn't hire ugly people to right. stand over you while you're trying to eat food. Imagine that concept. And wow. it's insulting too. Like the girl or guy is working. Now all of a sudden you're just kind of making him out to be a whore. Right. right. Yeah, exactly. Are you talking to her for like she yeah. she asked what I'm, I wanted to eat. Right. And I answered the question. <laughs> right. Why do you keep looking at her? Because I'm talking to her. That is a weird one. Uh-huh. Because I'm not rude and she's standing there. Yeah. Why do you have a fork under my yeah. throat? Yeah. How about that? The reason we asked, when did you know it was time to end the relationship? New videos on TikTok uh, appear to capture a bride at a Las Vegas Target who is tired of waiting. In the two-part video... A woman in a bridal gown appears to confront her fiancé at the store where he works, complete with a pastor and a bridesmaid. Oh, boy. In the clip, the woman could be heard saying, you put this ring on my finger two years ago, and it's time to do it or get out. Yeah, we're getting married right now, or I'm leaving. I'm out. I'm done. Like you, if uh, you don't marry me this second. Near the end, the bride spots uh, a woman who's rolling the tape and waves. I'm just finally making him commit, she can be heard saying. We're getting married right now, or it's over. It's unclear whether the potential bride uh, completed the wedding registry or whatever the deal was, but either way, that is a uh, that is a weird one. That is the Marion type right there. That is psychotic. Come to my work, yeah. dressed in a... Jesus Christ. I hope, I hope he did break it off. We don't know, do we? Uh, we don't know. We don't know the outcome of the video. Dude, we don't know, but it just, it's unclear whether the potential bride stopped to complete a wedding registry on the way out. No, just, you, you got to dump her. Okay. Uh, Miles, we have some uh, comments about cottage cheese. Uh, there's nothing to say. Got, uh, people do. They say cottage cheese is amazing with canned peaches or canned That's what I'm saying. Like, you have to put something. Dave killed a bread. Toasted with a little butter. Uh, that's not cream cheese. That's the not side sour. of cottage that's cheese. Not, that's not cottage cheese. With the side of cottage cheese. They're not cottage adding cheese. anything. Someone else says cottage cheese with chicken pot pie. Amazing. Oh cottage God. cheese with Italian food. I like applesauce with my cottage cheese. Cottage cheese with pineapple morning, noon, or night. I like this one. It says, gentlemen. I just had cottage cheese for the first time last week, and I'm 25. It's absolutely as awful as I thought it was. Yes. Someone else says subbing cottage cheese for ricotta and lasagna makes it way better. And finally, ice cold cottage cheese with salt and pepper is the effing bomb. Hmm. The effing I'm going to have to buy some of the walk home tonight. Well, cottage cheese? Yeah, now it's on my brain. <laughs> That's what you crave? I've never heard of anyone craving a flavorless, terribly textured food. You want to suck milk out of the nozzle outside of a factory. Because that's cool. Cut the man some slack. Just for, just for my soul. You want to swim in a pool <laughs> of milk. Yes. That sounds awesome. But I'm weird as I eat cottage cheese. Right. <laughs> right. It's yeah, a different texture. It. The texture is, it's the texture, I'm telling you. Random, random, It is amazing random, that it uh, random, random, elicits random, this response random, from people. Random, and people are on one side. No, oh, man. No one has said it's fine. No one has said it's okay. Either I hate it or I love it with. Yeah. Cottage cheese. Hello, Kevin. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, bitches. Hola. Kevin, you like cottage cheese? I do not like cottage cheese. It is of the devil. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Biblical scholar on the line. He's confirmed that cottage cheese is, in fact, from hell. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Let's go with this random question. Question. What uh, What was stolen from you or what did you steal? What was stolen from you or oh. what did you steal? So, 
back when I was in college, I was living in a fraternity, and uh, the back door was not the most secure. Um, so we go out to uh, to get lunch one day, and I go to pay for lunch and realize that my debit card isn't in my wallet. I go, well, I probably just left it at home, but let me check my bank account to be sure. Uh, it turns out somebody had broken into the house, taken my debit card out of my wallet, bought a train ticket down to Portland, a hot dog, and a ticket to a movie. <laughs> Sounds like an incredible weekend. <laughs> I know. I was jealous that it wasn't my hot dog and ticket to a movie. Hey, uh, did you cut them? I guess you cut them off before they could go any crazier, right? I mean, that's thirty five dollars yeah. just for the ticket to Portland. Hot dog's going to be five. Right now, you're 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 set back fifty bucks. Mm -hmm. It was it was unfortunate. Luckily, I called my bank and they uh, and they were able to to refund the charges. But then I had to treat everyone to a round of beers because they had to buy my lunch. So really, I was out thirty bucks. Anyway. All right. Okay. That's not that's a lose lose. Hey, man, at least they caught it. That's that's one good thing for somebody goes wild. I told well, it's you. not that they caught it. He had to call them. My I was in Mexico for a week. All right. So I'm using my debit card. I'm in Mexico. Every ATM I go to is in Mexico. Every purchase that is made on the credit card is in Mexico. And I fly back to the states, and we have a layover in Phoenix. I think it was. And my phone rings, and it's my bank. And I pick it up, and they say, "Hey." Man, we think there might be some fraudulent charges. I say, oh, yeah, why? They're like, because somebody just bought something in Phoenix. I said, Jesus Christ, man, did you look at the seven days? I, like, I literally just landed in Phoenix. I hit an ATM. If you notice, the week before that, it was a foreign goddamn country. It's me. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, like, yep. don't let Phoenix be the tipping point. Let a foreign country be the one. But thanks for calling literally a week after the fact. Very good. Very good. Reason we asked what uh, was stolen from you or what did you steal? Okay, police were called to the report of a stolen log splitter. All right, so, log right. splitters. Hey, hey, people like those. Somebody took my log splitter. A couple days go by. Another call comes in and says, I think we've spotted the log splitter uh, on an, uh, like an abandoned lot kind of thing. So somebody must have dumped it there, whatever they're going to do. Maybe they're going to cut down some trees in that area. So when they went to the report of the stolen log splitter at this property, they found a severed finger. Jeez. Along with a cell phone, <sighs> tools, and other items. <laughs> Detectives then later learned that Hugh Sieber had been dropped off at a Methodist medical center with a missing finger. The 50-year-old was then transported to the University of Tennessee Medical Center for treatment. Obviously, he did not take the finger with him, so they could not reattach the finger. Police met him there as he was charged with felony theft of property. If it wasn't for the fact that he left the cell phone and his finger on the, the finger, scene, yeah. he would not have been busted for stealing the property. Random, don't steal random, things random, you don't know how to random, use. Random, 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 so if you know how to use it, go ahead. Random, steal random, A log splitter, though. Random, 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 yeah, I wouldn't random, steal a log splitter. Random, random, not if I planned on using random, it. I would steal, like, if you needed a log splitter, but like, sure, I'll steal one solitaire. Dude, just go to the, go to the rental center. But you don't need to have money. one like you know all year round. You just need one like for a weekend if you're going to do that kind of stuff. Maybe he was going to bring it back if he didn't cut off his finger. We will never know. Yeah, maybe he was just going to do some work. It's a mystery. Uh, by the way, cottage cheese comments. Cottage cheese. Cottage cheese. Even bacon can't make it better. Cottage cheese jalapeno pepper uh, hot sauce is awesome. Cottage cheese and nacho cheese Doritos. Oh, of course. Wait. It's because it's a Dorito. A sprinkle, or say a Pringle, a spoon of cottage cheese and another Pringle on top. Only way to go. Are you talking about uh, mm. a cottage cheese Pringle sandwich? Yes, I'm Pringle bread. Essentially, a cottage cheese sandwich on Pringle bread. Uh, Dairy Gold 4% large curd. Best cottage cheese ever. Add large salt curd. and pepper. Doesn't that sound hot? Large curd. I mess with that large curd sometimes. But uh, even cottage cheese people go back and forth on small. Small versus large. It's just cottage cheese and pineapple. Dairy Gold used to make cottage cheese with chives. That was the bomb. Has anyone air fried cottage cheese? I have not tried to do that. Wouldn't it just melt? Uh, I like cottage cheese. I like like I like my steak. Salt and pepper. And then I like this one. There's a reason cellulite is described as cottage cheese. Because it's disgusting. <laughs> Random, 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 random. Good point. Random, all good points. Random, Hello, random, Rayleigh. Welcome random, to the men's room. Random, random, Hello, guys. Random, Hola. Random, random, Rayleigh, welcome to the program. Random question, question. It's going to be a tough question for you to answer. Do you like cottage cheese? Uh, I'm ready. All right, ready? If you had only one dollar, one American dollar, what would you buy with it? Mm -hmm. Oh boy! Are you there? Is there, anything you can, is there anything you can buy with a dollar? Okay, I got to think about this. Yeah. Um, okay, I don't know if I can buy this with a dollar, but I'm going to go with lifesavers. 
Lifesavers. I think you could probably yeah. get Lifesavers for under a dollar. You have to, right? Okay. We do have some of the things you can buy for a dollar. Well, tell us which ones you, you would buy or not buy. You could buy a lottery scratch-off ticket. I'm in. For one dollar. You could buy razor blades, one dollar a month from the Dollar Shave Club. You could buy a song no. on uh, iTunes Ooh. for 99 cents. That's right. A cup of coffee at McDonald's is $1. Uh, you can't buy a bus ticket here for $1, but other areas you can. And a, a, class, a classic crispy chicken junior sandwich at Burger King is That's it. $1. That's the one. Ooh, 66 cents in some area for a can of Pabst Blue Ribbon. Okay, well, maybe, you know, in desperate times, I'd go for the Pabst. Yeah. But- <laughs> what about a McDonald's cheeseburger? Is it more than a dollar? Uh, a cheese? Yeah, or like a dollar so. fifty. It's like a buck nineteen now or something. Is like there that? any food item that you could actually buy for? Like I know I could get maybe some Reese cups. I mean something. I mean, there's the Burger King uh, Junior. Well, chicken there's sandwich. the dollar you value. Still get meal. two tacos for a dollar. Yes, Jack in the box. Add Jack in the okay, box. Okay, that go. would be the best way to spend a dollar. Do you think that anyone has gone through the drive through window at Jack in the Box and just spent $1 for yes. two dollars Yes, oh, 100%. Do you I'm think so? More yes. than anyone there would like them to. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Think right. about the days back when you were super broke, man, and if Jack in the Box were as widespread then as they are now, and you got a dollar, hell yeah, let's get in the car. You probably right? would go and buy like 10 of them. You would buy as many as you could for like that, that little bit of money that uh-huh. you have left. Reason we asked, uh, if you only had one dollar, what would you buy? An Italian town is looking to draw in new visitors by auctioning off abandoned homes with opening bids of just over one dollar. The town of Salimi in Sicily announced it will auction off dozens of abandoned homes that have fallen uh, into disrepair for a dollar and 18 cents. Uh, All buildings belong to the city council, which speeds up the sale and reduces red tape. Before launching the scheme, we first had to recover the old parts of Salimi where the houses are located, upgrading infrastructures and services from roads to electric grids and sewage pipes. Now the town is ready to take the next step, which is selling these homes and getting people to go in there and fix them up. I'll do it. Yeah. I don't know. You were in Sicily. I was in Sicily. And? It's an island in the Mediterranean that has mountains. I mean, do the freaking math, man. It, like, yes, for a do- And keep in mind, you buy the house for a dollar, then you have to agree to invest, you know, what, like 50 grand into it, whatever it is, to make it habitable. That's the whole point. But like anything, if, if you invest your money to make it habitable, you, you're you going to take care of it. Mm-hmm. But yes, I would gladly live in the middle of the Mediterranean. Random, miles. Random, yeah. random, I think random, I can handle random, that for a little while. Random, 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 Hello, random, Bubba. Random, Welcome to random, the men's room. Random, 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 random. Bubba, hang on there one second. Miles, someone chimes in. You said Jack in the Box drive through $1. Yeah. Someone says, uh, oh, God, where'd it go? I did that. $1.07 for tacos. I was broke and hungover. Someone else says, I went to Jack in the Box drive through with a bunch of buddies and spent $50 on 100 tacos. Dang. Okay. That's living the dream right there. Yeah, it kind of is. I mean, it's a nightmare for the guy working, but... And you the next day, but in yeah. that moment. Uh-huh. All right, let's go with this one since we're talking tacos. What seems to happen to you, Bubba, more than other people? What is the thing that seemingly happens to you more so than uh, others? Oh, uh, geez. I, for one, have broken or and or sprained my left and right ankle a uh, total on both of uh, seven times. Jesus. We had a woman who called us a while ago. How many car accidents have been? Like 40? Like 30 or 40 mm-hmm. car accidents? Yep. That's a, uh, that's a tough question there. Uh, well, I mean, at work, I'm kind of getting screwed all the time, so. Getting screwed all the time, you said? Just my days are super long, and I wonder how long these other guys' days are. <laughs> who are doing the same you know? exact job as you? Huh? The same people who are doing the same exact job that you're doing? Yeah. Okay. And uh, maybe do you think that they get paid more than you? Or do you think that you work slower? I don't know. Maybe. I... Hmm. Okay. Well, I am the new guy, so I am kind of learning. Ah, okay. These days I've gotten back pretty early, and there's the whole fleet there. Oh, so you're so. the last truck in. <laughs> yeah, basically. Okay. But, I mean, there's days I get off early, and I come back, and there's, there's trucks already there. So you why, what, what what do you think is going on? Are they just able to deliver quicker than you are? Uh, I mean, they can be. I just sometimes I might put two and two together in my head when I'm overthinking it. But okay, all right. Well, hey, look, man. If you're yeah. always, I mean, if uh, <laughs> if you're the last truck that pulls in all the time, or maybe you get a late start, do you leave at the same time? 
No. There's, there's it. Well, kind of, actually. There's just like a 30-minute difference. All right. Well, maybe they just got 30 minutes ahead of you, Bob. You're not, you're not <laughs> overthinking two and two. No. You're no, just not. Right. A, the reason we ask what seems to happen to you more than other people... <laughs> The police in South uh, Strabane Township, Pennsylvania, recently tracked down a burglar who uh, broke into a Taco Bell in the middle of the night and stole $300 from the register. They found him thanks to a shot of his license plate on a security camera. When they ran his name, they found out that this is not the first Taco Bell that he has actually broken into. No, this guy has been arrested for breaking into at least 30 other Taco Bells in Kentucky, West Virginia. Pennsylvania and Ohio. He's a 30-year-old named uh, Joshua Logue from Columbus, Ohio. When cops did put out the arrest uh, warrant for him, he was easy to track down because he was in jail in Indiana. Any guesses why he was in jail in Indiana? Breaking bro- into a damn Taco Bell. He broke into a Taco Bell there. <laughs> I hope he stole a sour cream gun. More of the random question question coming up. 206 421 Bro, gnarly. What's up, Taylor? Dude, that nerd in his electric hybrid totally blew the light while texting his yuppie friends. That's so bogus, bro. Are you hurt? Yeah, like I can't move my hips, bro. I think I broke my pelvis, man. Dude, no way. Wait. Taylor, you need to drop a dime and talk with the lawyers at the Advocates Law Firm. No way, I can't afford that, bro. Your crotch is broken, man, and they don't earn any money unless they win your case. Dude, no way. You get injured, the advocates get results. Contact me today at advocateslaw.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Some fans gear up for game day, but some fans follow their team every day. That's why the Locked On Podcast Network has a daily podcast for your favorite MLB team. Every trade, every overtime win, every game. Our local experts cover the biggest stories around your team every day. Search Locked On plus your favorite MLB team on the Odyssey app or wherever you get podcasts. The Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You're in the men's room. 99.9 KISW and KISW HD1 Seattle. Your guess is as good as my cut up categories will be influential rappers and your favorite top 10 Halloween candies. Your guess is as good as mine on the way right after emails in the men's room at uh, KISW.com and a random question question. Uh, a little while ago, you asked, what would, if you had $1 to spend, what would you spend it on? And you had a list of a few things. McDonald's coffee, the what, bacon junior cheese, or no. I think they still have a dollar meal there. Uh, so, anyway, but we brought up uh, Jack in the Box tacos. And you said, man, do you think anyone has just gone to the drive-thru, they got $1, get two tacos? Well, a lot of people have. But someone has added, we have an update, the two tacos are now $1.19. Oh. So you need to go with a dollar oh. and a little additional just change. Dig under uh, your seat there. Yeah. A random, lot of people. Random, random, One guy said, random, I just random, did it earlier random, today. Random, someone else said, I did it last random, night. Random, Another guy that drives for random, Uber Eats, random, he was like, wow. Random, Look at Epic, it's great. Yeah, one dollar. Knock yourself two tacos. Hello, Craig. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. Craig, welcome to the program. Ran a question, question. Let's see here. What do we got for you, Craig? Okay. Craig, what would you say is the fastest that you've ever been uh, in a car, whether you were the driver or the passenger? What's the fastest oh. you've gone in a car? I mean, I haven't driven myself personally extremely fast. Like, I you know, maybe gone like 85 or something, but like somebody else driving. Um, I remember in high school, I had a friend who was just like, I don't know what he was thinking, but I thought it was hilarious at the time. He's going like down like 140th Avenue in Bellevue, like, you know, in a resident, you know, in like an arterial going like 50 or 60 or something, just like way too fast, just down the street, you know? And then on the freeway, I've had friends like, Push like ninety or so, whatever you know. Okay, uh, that's not so, so bad. Ass, you know, like back in high school. I was surprised that my 70 some year old dad got a ticket in Florida on the way back uh, from visiting. I uh, went down to visit him uh, last week. He was going uh, 92 and a 65. I'm like, Ooh. damn, dude. Does it, has he always driven fast? I mean, because my father, my father, man, he is a lead foot. And when we go on these cross country trips, I mean, dude averages like 95 at any. Given scenario, my father would drive as fast as is humanly possible. It's just what it's to the point where you didn't notice anymore. Sure. And then when I rode with normal people, I'm like, 
huh, so this is what it's like to go the speed limit. But the problem was this. You know, people would say, well, how long does it take to get from point A to point B? My father, you know, I don't know, man, like an hour and a half, or like two and a half hours. Mm-hmm. If you don't drive like him, it's two and a half hours. So we told him, dude, you can tell people distances. Do not give them time frames. When I, when I was young and dumb, I had a, uh, a motorcycle, and I, I did do 100 on that, but, man, that freaked me out. Sure. It was just, I mean, I was just, knees were wobbling. I was like, this is too fast. Probably, I probably got 100 in a car. Just, I, I, don't I think any personally have gone up to 108 just for a second to see what I could do. My buddy, we got up to like 118, 119, something like that. Okay. I've gone at least 125. And do you remember what kind of car it was? Yeah, it was a 1997 Cadillac DeVille sedan. God dang it. Were you driving? All right. I was. Okay. My mom had one. You? Yeah. You are like the safe. I know. You drive so safe, it's annoying. It I was can't in believe. the Outer Banks. It was nighttime. I was on a road. There was nobody else there. I opened that bad boy up. But at 125, it just blinks. So I don't know how fast I actually go. Oh, okay. So you were going faster than mm-hmm. that. Well, probably. It just said, I'm done counting. Reason I ask, what's up? <laughs> Mike, you've, uh, you, you've had some uh, vehicles in your uh, time that could push some heat there. What, oh, tell, yeah. What's the fastest you've ever been in a car? Fast, fastest I ever went was in my Camaro, and I went 110, I think. Okay. But could you ah. still, could you, are you driving to work? You could have pushed <laughs> yes. it, right? Oh, yeah, I could have. I think that I think the, the dial went all the way up to 180. But so. See, that's the thing about you. You were driving to work. I just, I've heard mm-hmm. about you. So it's like anyone else, it's like, it's the weekend, there's no one out. You were on the road when other people are on the road. Coming to work. That's right. And you weren't running late, were you? Ah, uh, no. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know why? Sometimes, you're... sometimes it's just a nice long stretch. You just gotta push it. Okay, oh, I feel you. Freeze. We asked what's the fastest you've gone in a car. This is a great story here. Atlanta rapper Salento was arrested Friday and accused of driving 143 oh, miles an hour on I-85. Salento, or Richard Ricky Lamar Hawk, was charged with reckless driving, speeding, failure to maintain lane, the whole deal. A police pulled him over at 3 a.m. after an officer witnessed his white BMW swerving around slower cars. The report said Hawk initially argued with the officers about how fast he was going and insisting that he had done nothing wrong. He told the officer he was speeding because he normally uh, gets followed when leaving events. The Watch Me Whip Nay Nay rapper said he was at the club promoting his new song, Watch Me Whip Nay Nay, and that he could go 143 miles an hour because he's not a regular person, according to the report. It was unclear if Hawk has an attorney who would uh, comment on his behalf, but he told the uh, officer... He doesn't need an attorney. He's not like anyone other He was not a regular person. Not regular. Hey, he's a rapper. That's good to I can drive that fast. Uh, By the way, as fast as you've uh, been in a vehicle, someone says, I did 155 on my crotch rocket, 135 on my V8 Chevy Vega, 112 uh, back in the mid-2000s on a Hyundai Accent. All right. 155 on a motorcycle. It says the bike had more. I did not. Someone else, I like this. Guys, 100 miles an hour, that's cruising speed on road trips. God bless you, man. God bless you. Uh, someone else, 183 on a bike, 145 in a car. 183. 183. And the fastest I've personally gone was 105 and a 97 Dodge minivan. Huh. I am impressed by that one. That, to me, is the most impressive that you got it to go on. I Damn. didn't think that thing could go that fast if it fell off a cliff. That's it's still amazing. bottomed out at 40 miles an hour. Random, random, yeah. random, random, random. Hello, Rachel. Random, Welcome to the men's room. Random, 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 well, hello, Liquor and Oars, gentlemen. Liquor and Oars, Rachel. How are you? I am good. How are you guys doing? We're doing very good. We're doing very good. Thank you. We're better. Rachel, are you into horror movies? You like to be scared? No. You Why don't? not? What's... Uh, no. Not really, no. Why? What is it about horror movies? Does that include, there's like... Friday the 13th, where naked teens get slaughtered, and then there's, like, the exorcist where the devil lives in your kid. Like, you you can't yeah. take either of them? No, I can, do the, I can do the exorcist kind. I just don't like the big slasher film. All right, so what would you say is your all-time favorite scary-type horror movie? Ooh. I'm going with the first Freddy, Freddy Krueger. That was a great okay. movie. Uh, Nightmare on the... Uh, it was a new concept. Street, yeah. uh, I, I would say Deliverance, yeah. even though it wasn't supposed to be a horror movie. That no, scared that, me it, it, scared more than look, in the, I would go visit a haunted house. I do not want to walk along the Appalachian I, I, Trail. I, 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 would say, I would say Jaws. Oh, God. I mean, it's not... Yeah. I mean, oh. do, what what scared yeah, me, I, what gave me, you know, nightmares as a child and all those things. I thought, that the, I thought sharks could swim up pipes and they could, you know, bite me in my bathtub. I mean, I had all kinds of paranoia about that stuff. I didn't think of Jaws as a horror movie. That's absolutely one of my all-time worst 
movies, I can't watch it. You know, it's weird because it doesn't qualify as a horror movie, yet everyone I know, it scared the living bejesus that's, out of that It might me, be, you're right, it that, might that be the most terrifying. That to me is the definition of what a scary movie is. Because the impact lasted forever, right? So sure. you could see like Amityville Horror and you could go visit the house and you'd find it interesting. But like if I'm thinking of the movie Jaws and I'm out in the ocean... I either have to stop thinking about the movie Jaws or I get the hell out of the ocean. Look, I know for a fact there's no Freddy Krueger out there, but, you know... Oh, uh, don't be so sure, Miles. It was taken from Chinese folklore. But I know for a fact that there are great white sharks in the ocean, and you know what they can do to people. I mean, this year especially, they've been just ripping people to shreds in Australia and South Africa. It's almost like they heard that there was Shark Week, like, ooh, let's get on TV and start mauling people. And and it's got to be realistic. That's it. That's all. It it, it has to be real. What was the movie with Glenn Close, where she boils the rat, or the... Attraction? Fatal, Fatal attraction. attraction. That, that scared, scared a lot. That of movie dudes. scared a lot. Of, it, living hell out of people, especially if they were having an affair. That's why Deliverance is up there. Well, that's why you go cl- through the rest of the movie. It doesn't matter. There's one scene where you're like, no, thank you. Right. That's why clowns are scary. It. Right. And there's people that just will put on clown makeup and do terrible things. John Wayne Gacy. Sure. Absolutely. They just had to throw Annie dressed like a clown. Mm-hmm. Although that said, that said, just on a quick side note, if you ever look at a picture of John Wayne Gacy and the clown, you would not have hired that clown. It's like that Annabelle doll. Like, well, why'd you bring a doll that looks like that into your home? You're asking for trouble. John Wayne Gacy is a clown. He looks like trouble. Well, Slacker came out with a list there just in time for Halloween of the 100 best scary movies of all time. I will name the movie. Anybody who's seen the movie, chime in and say you have seen it. All right. At number 10, these are a lot of classics. The Birds from 1963, Alfred Hitchcock. I saw it. it. I thought it was awesome. I've seen parts of it. I mean, look, you get the gist. Birds are attacking people that peck out your eyes. It sucks. Night of the Living Dead from 1968. Oh, so that's kind of creepy. Kinda I've never creepy. seen that one. I don't think I've seen that. Oh, that's the, that's like the, that's the movie that got the whole zombie genre started. Repulsion, that is the one. Uh, 1965, Roman Polanski. No. King Kong, 1933. Oh, come on. I mean, I saw it, but it, there's that, nothing scary no, there about was not it. Frankenstein, 1931. No. Invasion of the Body Snatchers from 1956. I didn't see that. I saw the one that came out in the 70s with Donald Sutherland. That freaked me out as a kid, for sure. Good hey, go-go song, uh, Body Snatchers. Uh, Alien from 1979. That, that was movie number four. terrified me more than any movie I've ever... I was 10 years old. My parents took me to see it, and when we left, I thought they were punishing me for something. This is crazy. Number three, Bride of Frankenstein from 1935. <sighs> uh, Rosemary's Baby, 1968. Another Polanski flip. Good movie. Like number two, and number one, Psycho. Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah. So they went very, very classic. There. Sure. Uh, scary What's movies. scariest movies? Oh, Jaws, right. Yeah, without question. I mean, it's, uh, seriously, the impact that that movie had on my life was, uh, that, was that was worse than anything else I've come Now, to be fair, we were the, kids. The Exorcist scared the living hell out of me. Don't get me wrong. But that seemed, that seemed more reasonable to me. Because like I said, once the kid said, I'm not going to untie myself from the bed, it's like, problem solved. We leave, you stay. Out. Peace. Mm-hmm. See, like, yeah. this, that's now a you problem. Yeah, The Exorcist was... That one was pretty scary. It well, was, they uh, redid it, too, all right? So when it first came out, it's just a girl in bed, and her head can spin, she pukes, and she says horrible things about what your mother is doing in hell. Still one of the greatest movie quotes I've heard, and you can't ever repeat it out loud. Your mother in hell. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, but she stayed in bed. I'm like, yeah, this seems reasonable. Jaws, you could say stay out of the water, but it, just did, it didn't seem to matter. The scene where they throw the priest down the steps in The Exorcist? Yeah. One night I was at a party in Georgetown. And uh, we had to go get beer, so we make the beer run and uh, go get like a couple know, cases of Natty Light or whatever the hell we were drinking, right. you know, the Beast, something like that. Start walking up the steps. I don't even know where the hell I am. You get to the top of the steps. There's a plaque, and the plaque is lit up. And we're like, Oh my God! This, these are the steps for the Exorcist. Yeah, the Exorcist steps. Yeah, I had no idea. You look down, and it was like one of those nights. It was rainy. It was dark. You know what I mean? It wasn't well lit. You look down, it was just like freaky as hell. Even well, and that and that house was only ten minutes from where I grew up. Yeah. And it burned down. I'm sure you've Oh, heard. really? Yeah, there's a park now. They won't... I think, like, twice they rebuilt on it or something, and they kept burning down. And who's trying to buy that house? You say, oh, this right. is where they did that. Like, no, mm-hmm. I'm out. The thing is, when they redid it, they kind of redid The Exorcist. Not a completely new movie. They inserted scenes. I don't know if they deleted the first time or they added them later. But they're showing a commercial for it because they're going to put it back in theaters. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they show that creepy little girl who would not untie herself from the bed doing that, like, backwards crab walk. Mm-hmm. Not- oh, yeah. And I'm like, I'm out, man. There's something. One thing that freaks anybody out anytime you make a little kid creepy, right? So Pet Cemetery. Once he says, I want to play with you, you're on fire, bitch. You're out. Sorry. Uh, the Shining. There's mm-hmm. nothing scary about that movie. And then these two girls walk down the hall, and I'm like, I'm 
freaking out the ring. Nothing scary. This bitch climbs out of the TV. Isn't it's like, that, forget uh, this, man. Isn't that, uh, isn't that place still a uh, hotel what in place? Oregon? Where they did the... Uh, the oh, the Shining? The Shining. Well, yeah, because it's a lodge, right? Yeah, it's like an old uh, lodge, like a ski lodge, maybe? Is it up on Mount Hood, maybe? Would you stay there? No. Hell no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Hell no. It's because of those girls, No. Right? Nothing else in that movie bothered me, but those two little son of bitches come rolling around the corner with their little pigtails, and they want to play, and I'm like, burn them with fire and get the hell out. Okay. Where do you got, Mike? Uh, looks like it was inspired by the Stanley Hotel in uh, Colorado. Oh, Colorado. Yeah. Well, I was completely off on that one. Random, Miles, random, I'm with you. I random, thought it was in Oregon. I thought it was in Oregon. Random, 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 is it still random, operational? Random, random, this one is, yeah. So maybe the interior was different because this is this is showing that would the outside. Be the problem, right. So I think the interior might be the one in Oregon. You know what would happen if it was in Oregon, though. It would now be a McMinimans. And they have theater. <laughs> it would be awesome. Right. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Last time I was at a McMinimans, my room was next to the principal's office. They turned it right into a McMinimans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I got a big old building, McMinimans. <laughs> Hello, Gilly. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, fellas. How's it going? Hola. What up, Gilly? Well, uh, you know. Okay, Gilly, let's go Not this much. one. What, uh, what stung you? What pests have you had to deal with before? What stung you? Oh, uh, I had a, I had a, um, a bee. I had a, I had a cast on my arm, on my left arm, and I was driving, and a bumblebee flew right down it. Right, I had the window open, and my arm was out, and the bumblebee flew right down my cast and just started and just stung me. How many times did it sting and you? Once. There's nothing you can do about that. And then no, there was did, nothing. Did it, did it swell up? Crashed. Oh, yeah, I had to take my cast off because it was just so tight. And That's what I was going to say. I just I went home, sawed my cast off, and then I had to go back to the doctor and put it back on. Did, Good he, time. did he think that that was the funniest thing that he'd ever heard? <laughs> no, actually, it's happened before that he is saying it, it happens more than you think. You know, you get bit by something on your... On your hand, that you have a cast on and it swells up. That would suck because casts already are the itchiest things on the yes. planet. So the fact oh, that yeah. you have something in there, man. And did, did were you able to extract the beer? Was it still in there when you cut the cast open? No, I got it out with. Uh, um, I almost had it on. I freaked out. There was a logging truck coming the other way. It was a two lane highway, and I just swerved right in front of the logging truck. Went into a gravel road. Did a few three sixties. All then, because a bee flew in your cast. Oh, yeah. I freaked that hurt. Yeah, I believe you. But you did the 360, two 360s, and gravel road where logging trucks are flying by. And I, I had a, a grab, I jumped, I looked in my glove compartment and there was a pencil. And I dug it out with a pencil. And I, it was funny, it was, I was just coming back from getting the cast put on. So how did, how did you break your arm? Oh, I was wrestling and I actually broke my finger. Ah, you were wrestling and lost. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Horse is just horse around. Horse. Reason we ask what stung you, state entomologists have won the opening battle against murder hornets. They say here in Washington they successfully uh, removed the first nest discovered in the U.S. two days after it was discovered in a cavity of a tree near Blaine. Nest was shut down. I think, I think they got uh, 100 to 200 hornets. Crews tracked down the nest after uh, weeks of searching. Uh, they're thinking there maybe there are a couple more. Did you guys did you guys see the pictures of what these guys and girls look like when they went up there? What the suits look like? It looks like they're astronauts. It looks like if you were to accidentally stumble upon this. I mean, I don't know if you would think like aliens are going to take your body up uh, <laughs> into a UFO. It is. It is just. It's creepy in itself. Because these particular hornets, right? So they're already talking about their size and their sting and the venom. Well, they can also basically spit the venom at you out of their butt. Mm -hmm. Do you guys know how they extracted the murder hornets from the tree? Uh, I read it this morning. Uh, smoke them out. Just like nope. you would think at home. You, vac you, vac you vacuum them out. That's it? They vacuumed them out. Dyson. They had a vacuum. Those things should work properly. They had a vacuum. They vacuumed them out. Of them. Mm -hmm. That's, is that insane? I would never have thought of that. You know what I mean? I figured, like, you just... I would have burned the tree down. I figured you put some kind of chemical in there, and, you know, maybe you just get one to, to bite, and then if it goes back in, it'll spread, or, you know what I mean? It kills you think of, like, roach killer Something strategy? Something like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? A little spray? Yeah, that's it. Those guys look like they might have some chemicals, too. 
The, I, I would. Mean, the, the pictures are insane. I'd have a bee gun. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're going to cut down that tree to remove uh, any newborn ho- uh, hornets that might be in there. They don't know if they dropped any eggs, whatever the hell it is. So they, they are going to take that tree down and then uh, and completely burn it. But that's... Uh, <laughs> and completely burn. But, then, but look, it's like it's, children in a horror movie. It all comes full circle. Here's the difference, man. I mean, bees don't give a crap about a uh, country line, like as far as, you know, Canada, the United States. They're in Canada. Yeah. They're all over there. I mean, sure. there's no way we're not going to get that crap again. I know, but I like what we're doing. So uh, I did circle back here, and I knew I would get corrected just because of how convinced you guys were that it was an organ. It actually is the the lodge from The Shining is the Timberline Lodge down at the base of Mount Hood in there in Oregon, and you actually can still rent the room. Okay, that, but that's just the exterior, right? That is the exterior. That yeah. is the exterior, right. and it's probably a McMinimans. Uh, by the way, uh, someone else says my older brother he roofed the Stanley Hotel from The Shining. Said it was the craziest and freakiest thing he's ever had to deal with. Yeah, I would not want to be up there. I, yeah, I just don't understand why you'd want to be in that room. That is no. the that's the lodge that you pass if you take the back roads. If you're say going to uh, to Bend, so I believe if you go over the top of Mount Hood and taking instead of taking I five the whole way down and before you get to like Eugene and cutting over, right? I think I've done that before. I've gone over Mount Hood. It but takes I forever. It does. It's the longest drive ever. And was- people agree that uh, children children make everything creepier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Remember that, kids. You're a creepy son of a bitch sitting in the back of that car. You are listening to The Men's Room. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, one in every five children killed in traffic crashes in the U.S. was a pedestrian. That's why 3M is working alongside local governments and NGOs to help improve crosswalk visibility and traffic markings in school zones in a worldwide initiative to provide kids with a safe walk to school and access to the education they deserve. To learn more and take action, visit 3M.com schoolzonesafety 3M Science. Applied to life.